most respected Rashtrapati Ji, the Honorable Mr. Justice Sadasivam, Honorable Mr. Justice Singhvi, my dear friend Mr. Salve, esteemed elites, ladies and gentlemen. I pay my homage to the memory of Sri N.K.P. Salve, and I address you with utmost humility when I see the dignitaries on the dais and the allied before me. I speak with some trepidation to an audience like this. Governance and the Constitution is a very vast subject on which one can talk for any time, but I will briefly share my thoughts with you. Governance has to be such so as to reach the goal set out in the preamble to the Constitution and sustain it. The goal has to be viewed by the vision focused by, as it were, the two eyes, part three and part four of the Constitution. While the guaranteed fundamental rights have to be ensured and protected without interference, all the directive principles not yet implemented have to be implemented effectively and expeditiously. The most important right is the right to life and liberty. This right is an inherent right and not one conferred by the Constitution. Article 21 guarantees a right only to a just, fair and reasonable procedure if the right to life and liberty is to be infringed. The observance of procedure has been the bastion against wanton assaults on personal liberty over the years, as the Supreme Court has itself noted on many occasions. The Supreme Court, through judicial statesmanship and activism, has expanded the concept of right to life protected in Article 21 to include several aspects of life. Illustratively, if to say a few, these include the right to travel abroad, the right to privacy, including telephonic conversation, right to shelter, health, medical care, the right to clean air and water, among many other things. The equality of status and opportunity in the preamble has also been interpreted by the Supreme Court to include egalitarian equality, in contrast to formal equality. Equality seeks to achieve social, economic, and political justice. Courts have overcome jurisprudential and technical obstacles in their delivery of justice, especially to the socio-economically backward and disadvantaged citizens, particularly of those rights which are traditionally viewed as non-justiciable. Taught words and deeds should therefore, before speech can be restrained on moral grounds, therefore, taught words and deeds should conform to morality. Morality is just a facet of dharma. Kāyena vācha manasendri erva. Dharma is more than just a word with no equivalent one word in any other language. It is a fully realized concept. The motto written in the emblem of the Supreme Court is yato dharmas tato jayaha. The Supreme Court has been tasked administering justice in a secular state with this motto. The entire administrative justice is therefore based on dharma. In this is implicit the performance of duties by those who govern and those who are governed. As to politics, which is referred to as Raja Dharma in the ancient times and the scriptures, the following wisdom from Mahabharata, Shanti Parva, is appropriate. I am only paraphrasing it. The paraphrase is, when politics becomes lifeless, the Dharma already developed decay. In politics are realized forms of renunciation. In politics are realized all spiritual benefits. In politics are combined all knowledge. In politics are centered the entire world. Those who govern and those who are governed should follow the path of dharma, which will result in good governance in accordance with the constitution. Sarve janaha sukino bhavantu is that governance and that governance is as ordained by dharma. Because it is said in the scriptures, ekayeva surud dharma nidane apyanuyatiyaha sarirena samam nasam sarvam anyatvigachati everything will perish with us with our body but the dharma is constant it will be everlasting it will be ever never perish and everyone who has walked on the path of dharma will always be remembered and today i am paying homage to a gentleman because he stood on the path of dharma the dharma of statesmanship and therefore we are celebrating it today such people never die they are eternal therefore if every one of us stand on the path of dharma every one of us will be eternal though we are mortals Thank you for this opportunity.
will like to present mementos and flowers. May I request Minakshi Salve to kindly present the mementos to the, His Excellency, the President of India. Minakshi herself is an artist and she has selected this memento. I request Mr. N. K. Singh to kindly present bouquet of flowers to the President of India. I request Mr. Samir Parekh to present a memento to Honorable Mr. Justice Sadasivam. I request Sanya Salve to kindly present a bouquet of flowers to Justice Sadasivam. I request Mr. Vishal Prasad to present memento to Honorable Mr. Justice G.S. Singhvi. Request Ritika Sethi to present bouquet of flowers to Justice Singhvi. I request Mr. Harish Salve to present memento to Mr. K. Parasaran. I request Gayatri Goswami to present a bouquet of flowers to the Mr. K. Parasaran. Justice Singhvi is an example of simple living and high thinking. He has delivered many landmark judgments on governance which have made a difference to our governance. May I request Honorable Mr. Justice J.S. Singhvi to deliver his address as guest of honor.